publishing an updated Tesla price target very soon. ARK Invest Director of Investment Ha Shakini was on TV two days ago and she talked about ARK Invest's latest thoughts about Tesla stock as well as updating the Tesla stock price target. So let's dive in. Good news also, my wife's back is much better now. It's still not good. I will need to help her, but it's no longer an emergency situation. And we both thank you so much for all of the kind words and all of the comments in the previous video. Thank you so much. And now let's dive in. Elon Musk has always, um, you know, both raised caution and and sort of pushed uh, the, the boundaries of AI forward um, in his work. So so he's you know spoken out a, a number of times about how we should be careful. You know, he, he even said that he could potentially launch a chat GPT competitor at some point. It's not really a maybe it is happening. Elon is recruiting people. We have an example right here, Elon trying to recruit Igor, a researcher who recently left Alphabet's DeepMind AI unit. Another giveaway that Elon is working on a ChatGPT competitor is Siobhan leaving the OpenAI board. Perhaps you would think she will be working with Elon instead. Siobhan is a Neuralink executive as well as a mother of two children and but that is Elon. Uh, so I, I guess I'm, I'm not surprised to hear the concerns, but um, I, you know, in this case, again, I think he's for Tesla in particular. The opportunity is really in robo taxi, and we're actually seeing early signs that autonomous driving is already safer than humans. So at Tesla's Investor Day, you know, they released the accident rate per million miles driven in the full self-driving beta software for the first time. Um, if you adjust that rate for uh, city streets, because up until the most recent release, that's really where um, the FSD beta software worked, is on, on city streets. It would suggest that um, a Tesla in FSD is roughly five times safer than a Tesla driven by a human. This is what Tasha is talking about. She did a Twitter thread about a month ago now, and it's actually really good. I covered it before, so I'm not going to go through it again, but... One obvious reason also why that data would tilt towards that is people that had FSD beta before had higher safety scores. So naturally that data is going to be skewed a little bit more towards appearing a little bit safer than it actually is. But it would also seem sort of unlikely to me that just the safety scores alone would be explanation enough to justify an increase in safety of five times. So I think Kasha is right here overall, but also we need to take the safety scores into consideration. But because everyone has a FSD beta now, despite their safety score, all of the data for the last few months really involves everyone. So this data is somewhat right, although not, not entirely, but as we get more and more data from Tesla, that data is going to be more clearly right without huge distortions from people with very high safety scores. Um, so again, I, I think this is a company that has the both the data set and the capability to prove to regulators that this technology is safer. Now, will it be regulated? Yes, um, but I think that cities and regulators should all be on board um, for this technology because we, th we think it'll be 80% safer than a human. And that will just be the beginning. The longer we have these systems, the safer they are going to get. Unlike with human driving, well, once you reach a certain level, most people don't really get any better or safer. If anything, with age, maybe they get worse. I'm so glad you asked about price points because that's actually the most exciting piece of this technology. The reason that autonomous driving will be so innovative is because it's lowering the price per mile uh, to get around. So right now, on average, uh, the cost to drive a personal car in the U.S. is about 70 cents per mile. Uh, we think the price of an autonomous taxi um, at scale could be as low as 25 cents per mile, although there'll, there'll be support for higher price points. Um, so that would suggest that all over the globe, including places like China, where ride hails already um, pretty inexpensive, autonomous travel should be cheaper. I think if we look far enough into the future, we don't need to say it should be cheaper. It may be cheaper. I think we can say it will be cheaper, certainly. 
It should open the market to people who are not in the ride hail space today, to consumers that are not in the ride hail space today. Um, and it'll completely change how we get around, how we receive our goods. So it'll change everything. Yeah, it won't be just rate hailing that will be available to everyone. That will change a lot. It will also be transportation for goods. That is going to be a lot cheaper. Everything would then be a little bit cheaper. That would be a fairly strong deflationary force on the whole economy. Um, so, you know, again, I, I think there, there's always going to be a uh, worry and concern over AI. Um, mm. In the case of autonomous driving, I, I really think that that price will be the major determinant of demand. And again, we're, we're already seeing that this technology um, is safer. It's not perfect, uh, but I think it'll be safer than mm. a human. There'll be there will still be crashes but I think there'll be fewer accidents than we see today. There will certainly still be crashes, but we will have less of them. And we do need to think about how will Tesla be sued and how much will Tesla have to compensate families for the loss of life. It will be very unfortunate, but that will be inevitable. And when we look at the overall picture, we will still have less death. So it does make sense to do that. But to those families that will lose loved ones, it will still be very tragic. Now let's take a look at what our competition is doing as well as what's happening with a solar roof, with a Tesla solar roof. Let's move on to Ford. It was another trender here today. Ford raising the price of the F-150 Lightning Pro for the fourth time in the last year. Pras Subramanian here with the details. Pras shares up at, what, about 2% today. So at least the street a bit encouraged by this maybe. Help with some of the costs. Yeah, I guess the street isn't, isn't concerned about the sticker shock here for people who want to get this F-150 Lightning. But yeah, you mentioned four price hikes here. So today they opened up the order books for the new, for the next batch of reservation holders. And then with, with that new pricing, so that Ford Pro base model went up $4,000 to $61,900-ish uh, dollars there. It originally started at $42,000, right? So that's $20,000 in price hikes over the last year, uh, went from 42 to 48.9 to 53.7 to now 61.9. So really sort of hiking that base level up a lot. The cheaper, or sorry, the more expensive Lariat and premium or platinum trims went up a couple grand here and there, but it's really this base model that went up significantly because you got you to say this is the cheap model is supposed to be a loss leader and they just can't keep up with the losses, it seems. That describes Ford's situation perfectly well because last year Ford's margins were 40%, minus 40%. Every vehicle that Ford sold, they lost money. And yeah, here the losses are too much. But also, this is good news for the Cybertruck because if the competition is priced at such high prices, the Cybertruck is going to have more customers. Not that it really needs more customers because we have over 1 million reservations, but it doesn't hurt. Tesla, obviously the leader in the space. What can you tell us about Tesla's solar roof systems? Yeah, you know, the, the solar uh, applications, the solar products have been sort of a mystery for Tesla. They, they bought Solar City with a lot of fanfare many years ago, and everyone thought they would be ramping up their installations. And new research from uh, the group Wood and McKenzie talks about how uh, back in 2019, Tesla said they want to install 1,000 roofs a, a week. They've only installed 22 roofs a week last year. <laughs> so it's a significant- uh, 22 total or 22 per week? 22 per week. Okay. Compared to goals of a thousand per week. Right? Yeah. So what's so, going on yeah, here? Exactly. So how would target. they in the world ever ramp up some of those installs to reach that type of goal? I mean, how many years out could we potentially be? You know, I, I think the, the, the bigger question is that maybe they don't want to. The question is, what does Tesla want to do with their solar business? Mm -hmm. We thought we'd hear more about that at the investor day and they didn't say anything about it. Other than the fact that solar is a cheap way to collect you know, uh, green energy. So the question is, are, do they have a new product coming out? Are they gonna roll out a new product? And that's why they're pulling back on some of these installations. They've canceled installations. They are funding people, people's money. So the question is, what's happening? And we have no clarity as to what they're doing with the solar uh, I mean, business. And right now, 22 a week is, is nothing, really. Obviously, not everything that Tesla touches turns to gold, but there is still potential. And over the long term, maybe things will turn around. There are more important projects that Tesla needs to focus on right now. Electric vehicles, the next generation platform, storage for energy is extremely important. If we just look at Tesla's mission to transition the world to sustainable energy, if there are other companies that can do solar panels fairly well, then let them do it.
and Tesla can provide energy storage at high scale, huge scale. And we are still on track to reach Tesla's goals of 20 million deliveries by 2030. Well, we need to grow a little bit under 50%. And so far, we are on track. We may not get to 20 million, but we might be quite close. Elon has not missed any significant goals for deliveries. Years ago, he said Tesla will deliver 500,000 vehicles by 2020. And that's almost exactly how many Tesla delivered in 2020. So nothing changes for the EV business and for the energy storage business and for full self-driving. I personally always viewed the solar business part as a bonus, not something that I'm relying on to do very well. If it happens, great. If it doesn't, doesn't really change much. And this is the Tesla stock buying opportunity explained by Elon Musk. My name is Matt Posius. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.